capital of Meghalaya, Shillong, lies on the eastern part of the state. Perched at an altitude of 1,520 meters above sea level, the city stretches for about 6 kilometers on an elevated track. It is situated on a plateau bound on the north by the Umyam Gorge, on the northwest by the great mass of the Dengye Hills. Shillong was made the capital of the Assam province under the British in September 1874. It remained the administrative capital of the state of Assam even after India's independence up until 1972 when Meghalaya achieved statehood. The British put in a lot of their resources in developing the hill station of Shillong into an administrative and leisure retreat. They built beautiful houses, clubs, churches, administrative buildings, estates, parks, gardens and sanatoriums in the same pattern of architecture as in England. Hello to all of viewers and welcome to Destination Meghalaya. I'm Aaron Lingdo. On this edition, we continue to relive Shillong Town's journey with a stroll through some of its iconic landmarks. We will manoeuvre the city's rich colonial heritage and history. And my time starts now. My first stop this episode is the KJPA Church, a must-visit spot in town. The original location of the Presbyterian Church was within the area where the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly was. This particular plot of land curiously had quite a few names. It was called Ilom Linkhut in the local language which in English translates to Naked Hill and it was also called Ingpot in some other historical documents. Some historical texts highlight that the area belonged to a Khasi gentleman named Paheb Pirbad who donated a portion of the land to Reverend J. C. Evans of the Welsh Mission. Other historical records show that the land was acquired by the Shillong municipality in 1902 from Brojendro Kishore Roy Chaudhary a zamindar of Rangpur in Bengal and given to the Welsh mission. What can be confirmed however was that a church was constructed at the site of the Legislative Assembly sometime in 1903 for services in English for Christians who were not Khasi. A quick visit to the KJPA church is what you should consider when you are in town. Some peace and quiet was never bad.
Well, the selection of Shillong as the Chief Commissioner's province in 1874 marked the arrival of many socio-religious groups, the Brahmo Samaj being one of the significant ones. Shall we? Next on our itinerary is the Shillong Brahmo Samaj, a representation of how multicultural Shillong joined hands to change the education of the rural people and increase the furtherance of the Brahmo cause. Founded by Raja Ram Mohan Roy in 1828, it was one of the most influential religious movements in India and played an important part in the regeneration of modern India. It was a monotheistic religion that propagated the belief in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of mankind. It began during the Bengali Renaissance in the 19th century. The ideals of the Samaj were brought to the Northeast by Assamese elites who studied in Calcutta in the mid 19th century. Meghalaya and Assam were amongst the Northeastern states that were hugely influenced by the ideals of the Samaj. The Shillong Brahmo Samaj has been in existence for 130 years and is one of the oldest in Northeast India. Established on 8th November 1874, soon after the formation of the Chief Commissionership of Assam in Shillong. Initially, the Brahmos numbered around 25, most of them well-placed government servants who hailed from Silhet and neighbouring districts in Bengal. The Brahmo Samaj movement in Shillong was mostly confined to the upper-class Bengali officials and a few Assamese and Khasis. The Brahmo community of the Khasi Hills, though a microscopic minority, played a catalytic role in the socio-cultural and religious regeneration of the Khasi society. Their pivotal role might be forgotten as of today, but historically, their contributions cannot be ignored. Well, away from the shuffling cabs and the busy pedestrians, we now head to Polo Grounds to my next destination, the Buddhist Monastery. Shillong is also well known for its diversity and secular nature, where many religious faiths coexist and highlighting such secular nature is the Buddhist temple which was built in the state and which also happens to be the oldest Buddhist temple in the region. This temple has an archway similar in architecture to that of the world famous Sanchi Stupa. After a few years of struggle, the Shillong Buddhist temple was formally inaugurated on May the 4th, 1947. The idea of the need for the teaching of Buddha in and around the area at that time, and Shillong in particular, goes to the credit of late Kripasaran Mahastavir, the president of Bodha Dharmankur Sabha, who visited Shillong on his pilgrimage tour and accordingly planned and arranged to build the Buddhist temple in Assam, Shillong. Many Borua Buddhist families came from Bangladesh to Shillong in search of livelihood. Jina Ratan Mahathira, a disciple of Kripasaran Barwa, was the guide in the construction of a beautiful Buddha temple in Forest Colony near Polo Hills in the year 1935. The temple had three rooms consisting of three statues of Lord Buddha donated by a family. Two more statues brought from Thailand and Myanmar were also installed. Presently, a two-storied building adjacent to the temple is being used for the residence of monks and guests. Buddhism had set its roots in Shillong, the then capital of Assam and now the capital of Meghalaya in the year 1918 and though it spread very slowly, at present it has three places of worship in and around the city. This is one of the most precious discoveries that remains concealed from the eyes of tourists and locals alike. Now this is the perfect place for you to be if you want to escape the stressful city life and experience the aura of tranquility. Speaking of escape, my next destination is something that you would like to consider.
The Shillong Golf Club, one of the oldest and best natural golf course in the world, is considered to be the Glen Eagle of the East by the United States Golf Association and Museum. The site where the golf course is located provides a scenic view. It was set in an undulating valley covered with thick groves of pine and rhododendron trees at an altitude of 5,200 feet in 1898 as a 9-hole course and later converted into an 18-hole course in 1924 by Captain Jackson, C.K. Rhodes and E.L. Watts. In October 1924, the golf club was formally opened. The longest hole on the course is the 594-yard sixth hole, one of the longest in India. During the late 1920s, competition held at the club attracted more than 100 golfers from all over Assam up to Bengal. This course finally was put up on the golf map of India in the year 1975, following which the first India Carbon Open Golf Championship was organized. At present, the club has around 90 regular members, including defense personnel as well. The Shillong Golf Course is also a place where the locals love to wander around and relax on the open meadows while admiring the pine groves that encircle the area. Many visitors love to take a stroll around the golf course and players come for a relaxing game of golf. Well, it's high time for me to leave this lush green grandeur behind me and head to my final destination this episode. My next spot, I must say, is the most intriguing part of the entire walking tour. Let's go find out. Well, Shillong Tir is a unique archery-based lottery game which is conducted by the Khasa Hills Archery Sports Association. Well, it is played here in Meghalaya where the winners are announced based on the number of arrows shot. For centuries, archery has been one of the traditional sports played by the Khasi tribe of Meghalaya. The betting on archery games is believed to begin somewhere in the early 20th century. However, until the early 1980s, betting tir games were banned by the government. The tir betting was legalized in 1982 after the state government realized that it could be a good source of revenue. The tir betting in the state is now controlled under the Meghalaya Amusement and Betting Amendment Act of 1982. Shillong tir is a curious phenomenon that blends archery and the interpretation of dreams. A single common phrase appears on blackboards across the city, scrolled in countless handwritings and displayed proudly at the front of each tir stall. The rules of the Shillong Tir betting games are simple. The player of this betting game needs to predict the last two digits of the total number of arrows that hit the target then the winning number for the lottery is the last two digits. 
The system works by choosing numbers and professional archers shoot arrows at polo ground. Some people play the same numbers for years on end. Others vary their bets from week to week. Most people play between 10 and 100 rupees, but there are stories of massive bets like 5 lakhs on a single number. ก็เนี่ยก็ยิงเสร็จคนนําจงนี้กลาสดังกุมไลทุเดกิลองชวาจงนี้กิลองกิลําบาริมกันกะเดนาดุอิกสนําคะนาสปะซันคลีซันปู